Welcome along to the Escapade Show, another Zoom Home edition. And I'm delighted to be joined with our guest today, who is, a, I mean, first and foremost, a friend, uh, but an artist, DJ, producer, and a hilarious laugh, Mr. Shugs. How's it going, Shugs? Oh, good, mate. Hi, how's it going with you? Good, mate. Good, mate. We've, uh, just, we're just trying to get on with things, as, as I can imagine you are. Um, I yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy times at the minute, mate. But listen, you can't complain. We're healthy, we're good, the family's good, and I hope he's the same. Exactly. I think um, there's a lot. There is a lot to be grateful for at, the, at a time like this, you know. Um, yeah. So you're in the studio. What's been happening that wise? Have you have you been making any beats? How's the creativity been during this foggy time? To be honest, mate, the creativity hasn't been great. Um, see, the thing is, mate, what I've came back to, right? I've got loads of projects sitting there, loads of stuff to work on. But God, I don't enjoy the music making process, right? I enjoy playing the tunes at the gigs. And see if I have no gigs, mate, there's not really anything to look forward to. So I've been chipping away, like chipping away at things. I've got projects up, up to scratch that like when I do hit the inspirational bug again, I'll be able to wrap up. But nah, mate, I just I'm just it's it's, it's hard. I'm struggling. I'm coming in here, mate, early in the mornings. Sticking to my, my routine, coming in, sitting down, mate, and I'm just feeling lost some mornings, just like I can't do any work mm -hmm. because there's nothing to look forward to, mate. There's no gigs to look forward to. First and foremost, like I am a DJ before a producer, like that's always going to be the case, it'll never change. Yeah. So the producing side of things to kind of benefit my DJ, do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's not it's not as if I'm like a passionate music maker. I only started to make tunes because they get more gigs, mate. So it's a wee bit harder for me to, to find the inspiration. Um, and what, when I'm at my absolute peak of inspiration is when I'm when I'm on the circuit gigging, mate, which is not happening at the moment, obviously. It's, it sounds like I'm speaking to David Rusty. Um, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I, that's why you and Rusty get on well, though, because you you are DJs and you know. Exactly. But, but do you not find though that like even though there is that resistance, like it's one of these unfortunate things because with the music potentially does come some more gigs and exposure. So to do the thing you love, you're going to have to kind of break through some of that. But I, you know, it's not you're right with just saying like me, but it's like it's just hard. What what I'm finding focus on now is like just musically with my, my DJ. I'm just trying to focus as much as possible on my DJ. Like doing mixes, take them take them. Uh, but DJ up a level, so to speak, and tighten things up because when when times are normal, when I, when I'm on the circuit gigging, I don't have time to do that, mate, because I'm constantly focusing on making tunes to keep a top of the level on the game. Do you know what I mean with the music? So I feel now, mate, with no gigs, it's kind of giving me a little bit more freedom. Um, I don't think it makes a difference, mate, with the music right now. I think it's honestly, in my opinion, that making music right now is a bit of a waste because if you look at it this way, mate, it's not looking like there's going to be any gigs for the foreseeable. And this is just my opinion, of course. But if I'm making music now, mate, and I'm, I'm finishing tracks, like when the gigs start coming around again, the reason that I make music for, I'm not going to want to play these tunes, mate, because they're going to be old. They're going to be rinsed out on my streams. Do you know what I mean? That's the way I'm looking at it. So I want to wait until, obviously, I'm still going to be doing a little bit, chipping away, but it's the DJ, mate. I'm really trying to focus on the DJ. Just trying to do as much streams as possible, tape, tape myself up and just, yeah, get more, get, more, uh, get more DJ mixes out and stuff. That's the stuff that makes me happier, you know what I mean? I can't, obviously, if I'm coming in here and sitting every day and not getting work done, it's stressing me out too, mate. You know what I mean? I, I just wish you could come in here and write the music and it'd be fine to work for me, but it's not the way it works. But when I'm on the decks, everything does seem to work. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of like, it makes me a little bit happier too to be doing that as well. See, I, I like it though, because to be honest, it's a little bit different than most of the, the, the other people we've had on in terms of the outlook. And, you know, it's, it's a valid point in terms of like not having an incentive to make tracks yeah. at the moment. And it's funny because some people don't work like that. They don't need the incentive. They do it for the other reason. It's the same way for you, exactly. again, but like for DJing, you don't need an incentive. You love doing it either way. So it's the same exactly. for producers. They would just, you know, nothing's changed for them. They're locked in a studio anyway, making tunes. Um, yeah. But it is interesting in terms of if there's not going to be any gigs for the foreseeable and you've got all these new tunes and it's, exactly. I, I told you, it's, it's, it's really, it's really, really interesting. So what do you think is going to everybody, be? Like? Everybody, as you said, every, everybody's different. Like, like producers, like, that love to sit in the studio. That's what they do, mate. They, they come into their studio. They've been doing it a lot longer than I've been doing it. I'm still, like, I've only been making music about six years, like, fully. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not, like, there's people who have been doing this 15 years and it's all I've ever done. I came into the producing game very, very late. Do you know what I mean? So it's not really my forte. It's mm. not something that I, that I've always, I've always, like, had the thought of wanting to do it, but it's not something I've always been passionate about. 
And don't get me wrong, it's took over my life and I do love it. But just at times like this, mate, when I'm kind of like isolated and I just want to be focusing as much on what I love, mate, and what I am really, really enjoy doing. Um, not only for the mental side of things to keep me straight, but just because I, I, I'm finding more passionate about it too. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 I can enjoy myself a hell of a lot more sitting on a set of decks for two hours and I can't sit in the studio because simply the studio is just not working, man. It's yeah. just not working. So, I mean, you have been, you've been doing DJing stuff. I mean, you, you are a wicked, wicked DJ, you know. I mean, definitely. Thank you very much, man. Awesome, and it's like I, I mean I've seen you play many times, and you know with the guys and that, and it's like we always have good fun. So DJing wise, you have been doing a couple of wee different things, which is great to see. I mean, yeah, go down to the studio. We're all about doing kind of odd, mad, random streams like up the crane and pizza shops and all that. So for me, I was so buzzing to see you guys went out in Belfast and found. Uh, I mean, that wasn't a Belfast. No, I'm only joking. Of course. <laughs> Belfast is beautiful. Belfast is beautiful. The green screen, mate. The green screen of uh, New York. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was just in the house. Right? So tell us, tell us a wee bit about that and the process and why you wanted to do that, who was all involved and how you found the location and stuff. No worries, mate. Well, the, the, the concept is called Set the Scene. Um, it's basically just doing what we love to do, um, mixing, mixing tunes, playing sets, only at really, really cool locations in Belfast. Now, the people involved, there's four of us, well, five now. Me, my brother, Hugh, who you know well, uh, Johnny Seeds, no, a very no. good friend of mine, um, a little photographer, Nowak his name is, he does the photography, and then our friend, Andy, who does all the drone footage. So everybody has their own role. Nowak does um, the editing, he does the photos, and, the, and the, uh, one of the cameras. Um, my brother looks at the like, supervisors, basically, he gets the generator and stuff, and makes sure everything's tight. CD's obviously a DJ like myself, I do the DJ and bring the decks. Um, and then Andy does the drum, so like it's a collective. We we'll just go to these spots, set up a, set up the decks, um, do a trial run first of all, and then just roll, mate. Just roll, just off the cuff sets, and then just get as much footage as we can. So there's a camera in front of you, that's like front of the house, it's facing you, and we have a web webcam that's on the decks, and then Noak would get some videos moving the rim of the GoPro, mm -hmm. and then Andy would get the drone footage in the locations, and then you just put it all together. And, it looked brilliant. I mean, I felt like I was watching a Peter Andre video, man. It was, uh, it was, uh, no, honestly, it was like proper, the waterfalls and like, I mean, that, that really was special. How was it getting all the equipment up there on Jenny's? And well, I didn't, I didn't go on Sunday, to the, to, or Monday, sorry, to the Glen O, the waterfall, but the one last week, mate, it was on Carmoney Hill. Basically, it's like a 15, 20 minute drive, not even 10 minutes from my house, but it's a hell, mate. Right, so I had to put everything in wheelbarrows. So I had three wheelbarrows, and I had the flight case with the Dax. I mean, there's like points where it's like this. So all of us, mate, are like half nine in the morning, like social distancing, trying to stay away from each other, pushing wheelbarrows, mate, up hills. Like, look at this the frame of me, mate. I can't, I can barely push myself up a hill, not on a wheelbarrow. I mean, we got, it took like an hour to get up, and mate, we were nearly being sick and all of the fatigue of getting up. I had to just sit down, mate, for an hour. Once we got it all set up, and everything was like, and in the view, it was just like, it's definitely, definitely worth it. So it's worth it, like, the bit of hard graft, a bit of labour, mate. Humbled me a bit, like, I haven't done any work like that in a few years. But it's I, mate, well. Always, always worth it, man. It's always worth it when you get those shots and you get it. It's like the hard, hard work pays off every time. Definitely, mate. Couldn't agree more. So before lockdown, um, what sort of stuff did you have on the horizon? Because, I mean, most people I've spoke to, even, like, the guys in the studio, like, most people had quite a big year. Uh, lined up or at least had some ideas in the pipeline or yeah. had things coming so what sort of things have you had to shelf and like can I put on hold? Well gigs, gigs wise like, I, I've missed out on a lot I'm going to be honest I had a bit of a quiet the last gig I played was Colours in February um, Galvanizers that was the last gig I played and I had a few quiet months I was quiet until May mid-May and then I had May was explosive I think I had six gigs in May Shorefest, obviously over here with my, bro my brother and all those guys run, which is one of my favourite gigs last year. So I was really looking forward to playing that. That obviously cancelled. And there was one, uh, me and Rusty were playing in Wales, Tremor in Cardiff, which was cancelled. And a few other bits and bobs, mate. And then obviously Luminosity, my birthday weekend in June, cancelled. Um, Creamfields cancelled as well, which I was playing. And then there was various other ones in the summer, mate. But it was hard, mate. It was hard to come to terms with, like... Um, I was kind of like put myself on the put myself on the shelf, hoping the cream fields would have been the one to come back to. You know, like at the end of August, maybe. Obviously, like before the whole when the pandemic situation was still in its infancy. 
But like the, the, the longer it went on, it's just a realization had said in, mate, that it's like there's nothing this year. There's going to be nothing. Like, nothing. Uh, you'd be lucky this year. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Very, very lucky to get anything. And that's what's uh, was, like to come to terms with. I mean, it was very, very difficult, I must say. Because, like, not that I ever take anything for granted. I love my job and I'm really, really appreciative of what I do. But the realization of like coming to terms with the fact I'm not going to be able to do this for the foreseeable me, it was it really, really hit me, like, really, really difficult how do you to come to terms with. How do you cope with that then? Like, what advice do you give to other people? Like, because I mean, there's people looking up to you massively and the position yeah. and stuff. And, and like, you know, obviously you've got the, the, the table there, you've got the wife, you know, it's like, you know, the, yeah. you have to, the thing is, I mean, what's, what, what the, the way that I've dealt with it is you just have to like think of the positives. Look at the positives in anything. It will be back. The scene will be back and the scene will be back stronger than ever. That's like the entire music scene, every single department of it. Do you know what I mean? It'll all come back. It'll be stronger than ever. So just like persevere and try and be productive and positive in other parts of your life. If you're like, obviously I've lost my job again. Do you know what I mean? I just need to be more productive um, with other parts of my life. So family life, do more stuff with the family when I can. Obviously, the set the scene stuff we're talking about. Do you know what I mean? Put, put all my focus and time into that and try and make my own happiness out of things around me rather than trying to depend on it with my job. Do you know what I mean? Not that I didn't do that in the past, but like I need to do it more so now because I don't have the release of of the, the happiness of going to play up against stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? I mean, again, as well, and then doing podcasts, doing stuff like this, it's keeping exactly. it busy. 100%, yeah, 100%. Anything, anything to just keep myself busy to keep myself busy and obviously to do with music so what advice can you give to other fellow djs that are stuck in that route that are maybe earlier on their production life or they just are not that interested in production but they're now like man they had a local gig that they played every weekend or whatever yeah. you know and they were doing mixes so what can these guys and girls do to kind of keep themselves busy? i actually think I actually think like this whole lockdown pandemic stage for anybody that wants to learn a new skill or anything, mate, it's a good time to do it. Like, because you're going to be a home, at home a lot. You're probably going to have a lot of free time. So although the situation is not ideal, um, this is the perfect time to actually focus on learning music production or learn DJing or get better or, or, or hone your skills because you're going to have a lot of free time. Do you know what I mean? And if you can do, if you can dedicate your time in the right way, when things do get back to normality, you can obviously show your skills and take, take advantage of what you've been learning. So, yeah, if you can, try and learn new skills, up your production game, try and watch as much more tutorials, try and make as much music as you can. Obviously, that's not working for me, like, but anybody who's wanting to learn, I actually think it's a good time to do so, man. Just try and be productive with your time, more so than anything now. Now, now going forward, what's, uh, what are you looking to try and do and, and make happen? Because obviously it is uncertain, but I think it seems like we're starting to wind this thing down now in terms of the pandemic. Yeah. It seems like lockdown's going to be over by next month. And it's yeah. like, so what, 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 are the, what are the steps you're going to put in place and you know, meetings you're going to have and things you're going to try and set up for, the, for, the, for when the next time you're allowed back right. on the road? Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say because I'm not the kind of person that does plan years in advance or plans everything. I'm kind of like in the moment kind of guy. I don't get me wrong. It's not as if I don't prepare anything, but I just like to do things as they come. So maybe first thing mate, is just like a meeting with the agency, Music First, who represent me, and things start to get moving again. I like to have a plan set, not too far in the future, like, but I like to have something to work towards. I always feel like if I'm when I'm working, that I have a target, something to look forward to, I can always work a lot more productively. Yeah. So maybe just that, like with the get get a production schedule set up because it is obviously now I'm just making music when I can off the cuff when it's working. Get a production schedule set up if the gigs start coming back in. Get like a list and maybe just start right. Let's have these four or five tracks done by this time. It means I can start working towards my schedule again. Do you know what I mean? If the gigs start coming, it means I can aim. Because that's one thing I used to always do, man. I used to always try and finish music that I was working on for a specific gig. So like a deadline, set myself a deadline that I have to play this tune at this gig or I have to do it for this gig. Do you know what I mean? Set myself a deadline because it's the only thing that seems to work for me. If I come in here and try and make music just sitting down, mate, I don't really work well that, that way. I have to kind of force it a little bit. The, the but deadlines do help me. I know they don't help a lot of people, but they do help me. Um, so yeah, probably just set like a, a production planner maybe, um, and then just keep focusing on staying relevant, mate. That's 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 the focus. Just trying to be relevant, trying to still try to not be forgotten about. 
during this time. Do you know what I mean? I know a lot of people, it's going to be difficult to do that. But I have like my brother and stuff with a lot of ideas of just how to basically stay relevant. Me, to stay so people when everything starts to come back, that people still want to book me and still want to. Do you know what I mean? Want to book me for gigs and, and see me playing as a DJ. I mean, that's that's probably one of the, the hardest things. And I think even a time like this pandemic, it's making a lot of people and artists realise like, oh, oh no, I really need to stay on top of my game to yeah. you know and put stuff out there. But I mean. It's worrying as well, isn't it? That it's like yeah, you, can, you can just be forgot about like that. But I, yeah. think, you know, I reckon releasing music helps with that, or at least releasing mixes and doing the cool yeah. stuff that you're doing to kind of be like, oh man, I miss his sets. That was class. Exactly. I can't staying, it's staying relevant. It's staying relevant, mate. It's just finding ways where you won't be forgotten about. And it, it, it probably, like, it'll happen to a lot of people, mate. The way that I'm looking at it is, like, it, it's, like, I was having a conversation with my good friend Jill, um, the Killer Idols brand and stuff that we'd done in Belfast. Yeah. This is with my friend Jill. And we had a conversation just, just yesterday, and we were talking like everything that we've done, like with all that brand and everything in Belfast, it's all just has to be started. We we'll just have to start again. It's just like basically back to zero, square one all over again. Do you know what I mean? Just because it's like you can't really expect everything to go back to normal. Everything has to go back. Everything has to start again from somewhere. So ever all the work that we put in to like build the brand and build it to what it was, we're basically just gonna have to start all over again. So yeah. that's the way it's gonna be from a career, not just in Belfast, but for everywhere. Mm-hmm. But I think the best start to preparing for that, to like come back, is to just be as relevant as possible. And the way that I'm finding to, to do that is to do these sets, doing the studio mixes every couple of weeks. I'm doing plenty of um, guest mixes, this podcast, stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Just staying relevant. The wee YouTube channel I've just recently started to start pushing myself. I'm just trying to push a lot of traffic through there too. Just keep all my socials relevant. Yet. Still trying to keep the Facebook up to date, the Instagram up to date with content. Just trying to keep as productive and as relevant as possible mate so when things do start come, to come back again i'm there and i'm ready to rock do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i mean it's, it's it's such an interesting crazy time i mean i know we we are certainly behind you and, and even all the guys in the scene we, we are going to try and plug as much as possible because we know how difficult this moment is especially yeah. a lot of the individual artists out there i mean for us at the so we've, Everybody's got, we've got the studio, we've got a, a, a business and there's a team of us, you know, but I do understand yeah. individually how this is having a knock-on effect on artists all over the globe as well. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's screwing to me. People don't understand. People don't really, it's hard to, like, see when you're sitting here as an artist on your own, it's hard to actually think, like, where, where, where am I going to be? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, how, how, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? It's, it's like all, it's, there's a lot of traffic going through your head, like, do you know what I mean? Because, if you have, if you're playing gigs and you have your your music to make, that's comfortable for you. You know what you have to do to stay relevant. You know what you have to do to continue doing your job and being a DJ. And all you have to do is do those things, do them well, and you should be okay as long as you have a, the team representing you. Do you know what I mean? Everything's gonna be fine. But now, mate, all that's took away. So it's like when people you're sitting here individually, you're like what, what, like do I make a lot of music? Is that really gonna make a difference, or do I do a lot of sets? And it's all like a big mushy mud pool, man. It's hard. To, it's, there is no formula right yeah. now. There's no real correct or there's no right or wrong answer. What you should be doing, you should just. Yeah. It's like everybody's doing things differently. Mm-hmm. It's scary well, stuff, man. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to come to terms. Like it really is. It was for me. Well, as as I mean, as very uh, very strange times like the, the whole thing. You know, I'm 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 desperate for it to open back up because it'll be a nice wee incentive for us to get together again and, and have a nice mm-hmm. party. You know, um, I th- again I think these parties are going to be like the end of the world. <laughs> it's like proper. They're going to the first one back. The first rave back is going to be like it's going to be biblical, man. Biblical. So obviously, as you know, with the studio, uh, a lot of our followers and, and, and fans and people that engage with the page are DJs or producers themselves. And mm-hmm. someone like yourself who's got so many years of uh, DJ experience and is a cracking technical DJ, what bits of advice could you maybe give to someone who's at a normal level, maybe looking to up the game a little bit or even beginners getting into it? What bit of advice could you give to them playing their first gigs or just playing gigs in general? What are things that you maybe do to make the process a wee bit easier for them? Yeah, it's for me, the, the, the main focus for everything is preparation. Um, I don't prepare my sets, like, I mean, track for track of what I'm going to play. But it's nice to have everything organized for when you're playing live to make it as easy as possible. The method that I have, it's foolproof, I like to say. Um, I have all my cue points and everything all set up for the bars so 
the if I'm playing on a set of Pioneer decks, I'll have the the, the C the C Hockey. I'll have that set in my record box for the 32 bar section. So I'll have a little marker of a C at the 32 bar. So I know 32 bars later after the C that the track will come in, like kick in. So yeah. if I start another track at the beginning, say it's a 55 second 32 bar intro. If I start that boat right on the C, I know every single time it's going to kick in perfectly with the other track, which means it's foolproof. So that's all you have to do. Do your preparation before. Don't You don't necessarily have to prepare your tracks of what you want to play because nobody wants to, you don't want to prepare a set and then it's not working for the crowd and they're not digging it and then you're stuck with a set and you're like, oh, it's not going to work. So always play off the cuff, always play off the cuff, but do your preparation beforehand to make sure that all your... Um, all your cue points and your set goes as smoothly as possible. For beginners, for beginners, what I would say for beginners is don't rush. Just don't rush. Don't try. Don't look at the videos of DJs and, and see like, oh, I'm feeling intimidated and that's where the level that you want to be at. Learn to walk before you run. Always try and like learn the basics of mixing and learn about the EQs on the mixer and just try to do things basically and then over time start to um, start to build your skills up. That's one thing, like it's intimidating. In any department, in any skill, you look at someone who's a master of their craft or someone who's an expert and you just feel like you can never get to that level or you can never like, you can never imagine that you're going to be there. These guys are in the same, exact same position that you were at one point. So just take your time, be unique as possible and yeah, put the work in and you'll get there. See, that's uh, like for me, because I'm, you know, I'm only like maybe, well, now since I started the studios when I started to learn how to DJ because I was in the position of sort of managing a studio and thinking, well, it's probably going to benefit if I know how to do this. And now I do yeah. lessons and all that. But that was the first thing I ever was like, you know what, I'm just going to nail the basics. Yeah. I can nail that and a mix sounds nice and smooth. Then it's yeah. like, right, how do I upgrade from here? How do exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. See, mixing the bare bones, that's what you have to do. Like Even at the advanced levels of DJs, like the experts, they're still doing that exact same thing. They're still beat matching. They're still using the decks to do a completely simple mix. And then they're doing more advanced stuff on top of that. Do you know what I mean? There's like At the end of the day, man, that's, that, that's the bare bones. It's the backbone of mixing music is beat matching and being able to transition well. That's it. Like, do you know what I mean? It's the advanced guys that take that up a level with effects and layered scratching and you can do a third deck over the top, but like if you can get the if you can get the bare bones down with just being able to basic mix, mate, you're, you're like more than halfway there. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I think that's great advice, though, mate, because I think a lot of people looking at it exactly that they look at the expert who's got like twenty thousand hours plus at what they're doing, and yeah. it's so easy to just be like, oh my god, I'm so shit at mixing, and I'm just yeah. I'll never be as good. It's like well, you, you would not He's doing the same. You're doing, he's just doing it in a way more advanced level. You know what I mean? So learn the basics, master the craft at the absolute beginning and start of your journey. And then as you go through, go through everything's going to be smoother. It's the same in music production too. Like, don't jump in. Like, learn the basics, learn the program, learn how to use the DAW. It's an instrument. You, you wouldn't pick up a guitar and start trying to rock out. Do you know what I mean? Some Jimi Hendrix. It's just not going to work. You need to learn your chords. You need to learn everything first. Learn how to use the instrument. Learn how to use your Ableton or your Fruity Loops and then start to get more advanced and you'll get there eventually. I also think a big part of it is is actually like knowing where your strengths lie and also like asking a friend or asking someone that does, like collaborating with people that know more than you. Like there's no shame in asking for help. There really isn't. 100% collaborating is one of the best things you can do, mate, for learning because the, like everybody has their habits. Everybody does make, makes music and does their, their things the way that they do it. It's even when you get in the studio with someone else, like even when I was over reuse, like she's sitting in the studio with Woody, like Woody does things so differently. And you learn a lot from sitting with another artist because they do things a completely different way than me and Woody, Woody make completely different styles of music. But when we're just sitting in the studio at day having a beer talking, like it's just watching the way he does things and sets things up. It goes into your mind and you come back and you do your own implementation on that ability or on that skill that he's showing you. That's completely different than the way that you do it. His yeah. may be a little bit quicker than yours. You're, you may show him stuff that's... that's um, quicker than what he does but at the end product of it all is you're both learning from each other do you know what I mean that's just the way it is it's like collaborating is the best thing you can do to learn in music no doubt about it and again it doesn't really like there's no right or wrong essentially if it sounds good <laughs> exactly mate use your ears like obviously you don't throw your sub bass out of the way as wide as you can in your mix like 
But there's some some rules you don't do. But the majority of stuff, mate, if it sounds good and it works like, there's no rule. Like, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's funny because I've, like, now I've been in so many different people's studios and literally every single person works different. <laughs> like, exactly. every... That's it, That's because it. most people, like, you're self-taught. Every, the way that the, the journey that you, it's, you're, you're teaching yourself, it's the way that you've learned. Do you know what I mean? You're not learning off someone else. Obviously, if you do tuition or stuff like that, there you'll learn their skills, but you're not going to be a carbon copy. You're always going to be your own individual artist and do things the way that you do things. You're going to have preferences and tastes that you like that other people don't. And that's the exact, exact same in your workflow too. You're going to do things differently. So here's a question, right? Because one of the things we come across a lot in the studio, right, is I think probably some of this stems from people wanting to run before they can walk, right? But it's like, how do people find what their sound is, right? Because we have a lot of people that come through that, like most DJs, like a lot of different styles of music. Like, that's all uh-huh. about being a DJ, isn't it? It's like, you, you know your music, no matter kind of the genre, or sometimes it's genre specific. But we'll have some people come in that are like, man, I love house, I love techno, I love trance, I love it all. Yeah. And they're just starting out and their brain already is like setting them up for failure because they're like, oh, I don't know because I want to do it all and I don't know what to do. So therefore, yeah. their enthusiasm to even get started sometimes dries up quickly because they're yeah. confused. So what do you suggest to people that love loads of different styles of music, want to be known as a DJ, but they're unsure of what to do? Just find your flavour, mate. Find your flavour and the one that tastes best to you. So, like, I feel like I love lots of different kinds of music, but nothing gets me more excited than banging trance or hard trance. That's just my preference. Like, that's that's the music that gets me going. Now, I love techno, I love house, I love all kinds of music, but, like, the one that I choose to make and the one that I'm most passionate about is the harder stuff, of tra- the harder side of trance. Simply be, mate, because I find the most energy in that, and when I'm in a club, nothing comes close. So that's the music that I make. That's the music that I produce. I spend all my time trying to make that kind of music. And I've dabbled in other areas and had a little bit of experimentations with other styles, but I always find that I come back to the style that I love. And um, just dedicating, my te- dedicating all my time and my focus on the one sound that I know that works for me and that I love, and then it'll all just come together from there. Mate. That's what happened with me. Do you know what I mean? I just like if you listen to my music from like five years ago when I was only starting to now, it's, very, it's still, it's, very similar it's almost the same it's just more of an advanced sound now but like it's the same elements the same style it's just it's never really changed i'm not telling you to pigeonhole yourself and not make any other music but until you're really really comfortable of where you are as a producer and as a dj then you should definitely be focusing on one because you're not going to get confused then do you know what i mean you're just gonna it's just inviting more worry and self-doubt by listening to all these amazing different kinds of music made by amazing artists in their forte and in their in their genre you can't make them all unless you're Will Atkinson. So, well, <laughs> I mean, I think also, I think also a good point though with, with all that is like, is the is working just tremendously hard at no matter what genre you're trying to get into is like is working yeah. hard at it and like actually listening and finding stuff that people normally aren't listening to. But it is, I mean, I know it's difficult because there's there are so many people that are that like, kind of confused. But I think you're never going to have the impact that you want on the scene that you want to unless you kind of make it quite big in it. So I suppose if you can focus, let's say, on one of those and then it's like, right, get yourself quite big and then yep. from there you can maybe start experimenting more because it's now I've kind of built the leverage, but it's just You've a got the backbone. You've got the backbone of success. Do you know what I mean? You've dedicated what that's going to do. If you do well in trance and you want to like kind of, you want to move over to maybe techno or something, you know that you have it in you to do well because you've done it in one genre. You have the you have the production prowess from all your learning. You know you can make the music. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you, you've tried, it's tried and tested in your mind. You've done it before. So you'll be able to transition quite easily as long as you can make the music to a, as high level as you can make it in the, the genre that you're leaving, obviously, or like your alias or whatever that there. But it's like it's the, jumping in at the start and trying to make loads of different styles and you, the, the, the advice to these people is you, you have to you have to dedicate the one you have to put your full focus into your one your favorite flavor and then second yourself with that flavor and then move on to something else obviously when you have your success and, and your uh, the abilities to do to do so i think that's a good point like doing it one i mean i see it with like steven who had been for years making stuff in trance music and still releases yeah. stuff in trance 
then he tried his hand at techno with the whole Kunky project straight away. I mean, he's had Carol Cox supporting the stuff, with Patrick. And, and for me, that, that's really, really exciting. Like, you know, he's ticked a load of boxes across two, two different genres there now. In terms it's, a of blueprint. it's a perfect blueprint for any young producer. Look at Woody's story. That's a perfect blueprint. Do you know what I mean? He was, fuck, he was at the top of the game in trance, doing very, very well. Massive labels he was releasing on. Consistently amazing music. And then now he's, tra he's um, transitioned over to his Kunky project and he's doing... Yeah. Probably be better than he was doing in trance when he was leaving. He's bigger DJ supporting, do you know what I mean? Carl Cox, mate. I know. I mean, I'm probably arguably the biggest DJ in the world supporting his music. It's Alan just, Fitzpatrick, a constant supporter, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it yeah. just shows you it can't be done, but you it's just need to put it in properly. It's funny though, like for me, because I'm sort of in a unique position with sort of my position in the dance scene and like, you know, I know a lot of different people and I'm not like really pushing myself as an artist or that, you know, I just, I like knowing everyone and, you know, sort of being in there and, you know, I do do a, a little bit, but it's funny yeah. because I see so many different artists across all different genres and every one of them are similar in terms of like beating themselves up in terms of not thinking they're doing enough. Not, do you think that's just part and parcel with being a creative person? Yeah. It's part of the game. It is for me anyway. I'm exactly the same. All the, all the guys I work with um, at the same level as myself, they're all the same. Man. It's like, oh, could it be doing more? Or, or like, oh, should be doing this, should be doing that. I think it's just human nature, mate, to be honest. Like, you, you don't, I don't, I'm not the kind of person that would just sit down and say, oh, I'm doing well and start pat myself on the back. <laughs> I mean, I'm the kind of person I am. It's, I have to be always trying to strive to be better and always trying to, 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 to counteract those self-doubts, do you know what I mean? And, and, and take them head on and try and be a better artist and a better person because of it. I think it's just part of the game, but it's always going to make you better too. If you always have that self-doubt, you're never going to be, you're never going to be happy, with, you're never going to be comfortable, you're always going to strive to be bigger and better, which yeah. is always going to help. It's like, ultimately, I think the people that make it in life, whatever you consider making it, because making it is an individual thing, but I think it is those people that strive past that and the self yep. and actually like because everyone could be something or be someone but why they don't post that video or post that bit of content or whatever is usually through self-doubt thinking what are yep. other people going to think of me what are yep. you know i'm not an authority in this so why would anyone think this is any good yep. how do people combat that that are maybe sitting there ready to post their first mix but they're feeling so intimidated because Maybe they've got you on the friends list and they're like, oh man, Shugs is going to listen to this and you'll think it's a load of shit. Or, you know, not you're that, you're that, I know you and you would never think yeah. that, but how do people stop themselves from basically, you know, being their worst enemy? It's, 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 I know we're talking about self doubt, but mate, you have to believe too. Like, you have to believe, do you know what I mean? If you're putting the work in, it's so easy, mate. That's the easy thing to do, not to post it and the car away and get away. That's the easy thing to do because there's not, you're not, taking any risks there there's no negativity to it yes you'll maybe just be like oh, i didn't post it but you'll get over that in no time it's 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 having the the, the balls excuse my friend to actually pursue and go ahead with it you know what i mean that's the harder thing to do so believe me you need to believe just believe that you're doing the right thing believe that you the time that you're dedicating to your, to your project or whatever you're doing your skill or anything that it's working mate, and you have the potential to do well on it and if you believe that maybe if you have self-belief as well then you're always going to be fine. You, you just half, the push, battle, you, half the battle, mate. I like it's not to say you can't be. I, I, I have you have, have to have both. You have to well, don't not you have to have both, but you have both. Self doubt. You're like, oh, is this the right thing to do? But it is the right thing to do, and you know it's the right thing to do. It's mm -hmm. just uh, sometimes it's hard to, to believe that it's to, to push yourself and yeah. believe that it's the right thing to do. But you wouldn't be dedicating all your time into something like a project or something you're really passionate about for you to. to not believe that you were going to be successful in it, do you know what I mean? There's a reason why these thoughts are going through your mind when you're laying in bed at night or when you're sitting in your studio wrecked and your head's wrecked. You have to push on, mate. push on and be just do as much as you can and believe it. Like, because it will happen if you do work hard enough. I think it's just difficult with so many people now being on social media, surrounded by, and like being able to become like friends with your favorite DJ online who accepts yeah. your friend request or whatever, or you now follow them on Instagram so you now see everything they're doing. And it's like, with this whole comparison lifestyle that we've got on the yeah. go now. 90% like 95% of artists, like all these people have been in the exact same place that you've been in as a young aspiring DJ or producer. Do you know what I mean? So like looking at it in that way, like oh, intimidated, like 95% of these people would want to help. You want to help? This is one thing I always say to people. Like 
if a young producer would send me like a, a track for me to listen to, I would always say, send me your stuff, keep sending me your stuff, I'll check it out, I'll listen to it, you know what I mean? I'll give you feedback because you want to help, do you know what I mean? And it can, you can understand for some people like that really look up to, it would be hard to send it. They're, they're like, oh, he's going to rip me to shreds here. Or, oh, this is just not going to go down well. But like at the end of the day, like everybody wants to help. I always want to help people. I mean, it's something that I'm passionate about. I like to help people. Like I've only recently found out in the last couple of years, doing tuition and stuff and teaching, I'm extremely passionate about teaching people how to make music and stuff. That's the project I'm going to go into later in life. I want to go into teaching later in life when I stop my DJ career. I don't want to do this forever. So like, don't mean I'm always willing to help. And most people will have the exact same mentality that I have. Don't feel intimidated. If you need any help or if you feel like it, it's, it's going to be run down, people don't do that. You don't, I don't listen to people's mixes and run them down. You know what I mean? I'll be more, give you a, con, either constructive criticism or give you some praise because you're doing well. Do you know what I mean? Don't be shy away from confrontation or, or criticism because it's the best thing that you can get. Like. I think um, the whole point of like, you know, they have been in your shoes. I mean, it's that, I mean, I was actually talking to a techno DJ and producer yesterday called Nightwave and she, you uh -huh. know, talking about something similar and it's exactly that it's like they've been in that position so it's like they were once that wee guy or girl looking up to the dj trying yeah. to message to them and the you know, boy. <laughs> I, it's just it's crazy it's crazy how it works out but again it's just about don't take yourself too serious don't worry if you get a knockback just keep going man if it's something you love doing it doesn't matter if you get knocked back or not it's going to be difficult but you're still alive you're going to be all right yeah, it's that there old Rocky uh, speech, and it? it's not how hard you get hit, it's how hard you get hit and keep going. That's it. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Don't yeah. let it stop you. Uh, if anything, it's just going to make you better. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Right. Couldn't so, agree more. Mate. Nail on the head. One more question to wrap it up. We've been asking every, everybody else, so I'm going to ask you as well, Shugs. Can you give us a recommendation for a DJ set, an artist, a song, a favourite movie, whatever it is, something to do during lockdown? But um, Right, I'm going to give you a recommendation. I'll give you a recommendation of a DJ set, right? It's a, it's a kid from Belfast. This kid is the next big thing, okay? He's 17 years of age. His name's Reese Foster, okay? I'm gonna, I'll, I'll give you the link to check it out or whatever. Check this kid out, mate. This kid's musical knowledge for mixing music, exactly what I'm all about, DJing. This kid's musical knowledge for mixing music is like nothing I've never seen before. He's like years ahead of some professional DJs, mate, in regards to his tune selection and the way that he mixes. And just recently, I've managed to bully him into starting to make music. So I've, he's got his own computer and he's now starting to learn and make uh, music, music production. But listen to his DJ sets, Reese Foster, R-E-E-C-E -E Foster. Check him out. He is an animal, mate. Reese Foster, okay, and that's cute. And again, you know, props to Shugs, you know, bringing up the young guns and, and you know, yep. showing love. love it. Showing love. Well, look, Shugs, thanks so much for uh, coming on. Uh, I mean, you've been over to the studio before. We've been over to Belfast. I mean, I've even played a gig in Belfast. Um, awesome. sure. thanks, to the, the, <laughs> thanks to the Shug brothers, man. And, um, you know, my first international gig, man, you know. <laughs> I, I definitely owe you a lot too, man. And, no, um, but mate, no. we'll have to get something sorted for after, like, we need to tie in, to get, uh, come back over, you can come over here as soon as we can, all this definitely, lifts. Definitely, man, it'd be good to, be good to do something, um, I, know, I know, I know, certainly we'd love to somehow get involved in this show fest, so try and keep a slow open for Stevie. No worries, mate, I'll speak to Hugh, see what we can do. Right, man, Troops, another episode of the podcast today with Shugs, and please go and check out his music, go and support, um, and I keep your eyes on the page for any updates. Go and check his latest stream up in the middle of the hills. Looks so good. It's on my YouTube. It's on my YouTube. Car Money Hill, Belfast. Sweet. Until next time, Troops, don't forget to subscribe. Yep. Thank you, Shugs. Take care, everybody. Stay safe and healthy, and hopefully see you soon. Cheers, brother.